Welcome back to Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup, uh, Series 2. Uh, last game, uh, you know, I have to say it didn't go that well. Uh, I blundered pretty early in... You know, I, I had a character that was set up great. I had this Demon Spawn Monk, and I found Okawaru early, and that's, like, just great. Uh, but I disrespected some early game enemies, and I got punished for it, and I'm dead now. So we get to pick a new character. And I'm still not feeling anything in particular, so I'm going to just take another random character. Formicid Wizard, huh? That doesn't seem very strong. But, you know, we'll take it. I said I wanted something random. If I'd wanted a random good character, I could have asked for that as well, but I didn't. And, I mean, he's not the worst in the world, is he, right? I mean, he's bad at magic, but not the worst. Um, and Wizard is a sort of an interesting class, uh, rather, background, in that it's not necessarily magic focused forever. Uh, your early book sort of runs out of good spells pretty early. So first of all, like, what the heck is a formicid? Uh, you know, if you know your Latin roots, the word kind of looks like bug or ant or insect or something like that. And so we're sort of ant people. Um, we have uh, six, well, four arms and two legs for six total limbs. So we can use two-handed weapons and a shield. We have antennae, just like in our first Demon Spawn game. And uh, we can dig dig around in the dungeon, which is a very strong ability to, to structure the, the dungeon the way we want it. Uh, but we are under stasis permanently, so we can't, uh, we can't teleport at all. We can't blink. We can't haste, uh, which, is, which is quite a penalty. Uh, it sort of makes up for the big buffs. But, I mean, Formas in, in general are on the whole, pretty strong. Uh, this adder, uh, maybe, is about to prove me wrong, honestly. Why do I have two robes? When did I pick up a robe? I didn't. I never picked up a robe. What? Oh, because I can't wear a hat, and wizards start with a hat. And so I just turned it into the most suitable piece of armor. That's pretty funny. I think that's kind of a bug, honestly. Um, I'll, I'll report that. Um, but anyway, we've got this adder, and uh, he's faster than we are. And it's way, like, I don't know, I could try a random potion if I need to. But uh, I think the best I can do is shoot some magic darts at him, my starting spell. And if... If and when that doesn't kill him, you know, uh, just sort of punch him and hope he dies. I don't, I don't have a lot of other options. I think this is just going to be the end of us here. Yep, game over. So that's what happens when you have a bad starting character. <laughs> and an adder, I mean, on dungeon one at level one is, is really tough. So I could have like shafted myself down to dungeon two or three or four. I'm not sure how deep a shaft takes you. Um, I think any of those would have been possible. But uh, I think it just would have been even worse down there. So, uh, well, not, not going to make that a, a whole video on its own. Let's start a new one, huh? Uh, Deep Elf Wanderer? Sure. So Deep Elves are uh, very magic-focused characters. They're, they're very smart, but very fragile. Uh, what, and, and Wanderer is an interesting starting class background, starting background in that um, it basically just gives you like a random assortment of skills and, and items and uh, it could be, could be what your character is, your race is suited for, it might not be. So it looks like we got to start with a book, that's cool. It's kind of a lame book, it's awful. Uh, but you know, it's better than no book at all. And we have weird, not very good skills. I guess we have quite a lot of spell casting, which is good. Uh, Deep Elves are great at all sorts of magic. Uh, so I guess, and we have a dagger. You know, our, our probably our best item here is a plus two dagger. Honestly, the spell book is sort of mediocre. I like, like, Flame Tongue is what a Fire Elementalist starts with as well, and it, it carries you for a little while. But Inner Flame is not one that I'm very comfortable using. 
So I'm just gonna memorize flame tongue and focus on spell casting and conjurations, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna be killing people right now. You know, because we also have this dagger. I don't know, I might not be killing people. It might just be like the game is about to end. <laughs> uh, I also have this bow, I guess? Like, I don't have any bow experience. I don't know why I got a bow. But sure, I'll, I'll shoot at him. I missed. Ugh. There's no... I guess up here I have sort of a good angle on them. Miscast Flame Tongue. Okay, so this dagger is a lot more effective than our spells right now. Honestly, so... Uh, Deep Elves, though, are so good at magic that I think I'm gonna I'm gonna give spells another another chance give them give them some time to work up their power yeah well I don't I'm not gonna get that kind of time am I I have a scroll of fear if I want this character to live I gotta read it right now yeah run away please oh I stepped on a teleport trap and now I'm getting hit by other guys this is the worst Ugh. Okay, well, we're alive for the moment. This jackal, though. I'm, I'm out of, of resources here, and there's just so many jackals. I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, there's not, not much I can do, but hope that tab works. And yeah, it didn't, of course. Uh, I don't know if I want to play any more random characters. This is too depressing, man. Um, uh, what have I not played a lot of recently? Honestly, Monk was fun. Uh, I could play like a... Oh, something I wanted to win, and it's not a good character, so I'll probably die a fair bit anyway, is I wanted to win a Ghoul Warper. They're kind of interesting. Uh, unarmed, please. Uh, so ghouls are undead, and all of the undead have kind of a weird relationship with food. Uh, they don't get hungry in the same way that other races do, and they each have their own weird food quirks. Uh, so ghouls can never be full. They're just always, always interested in eating. Uh, and when they eat, uh, and they can always eat corpses, no matter how hungry they are. Um... And when you do eat corpses, as you're about to see, you regain health. Uh, it's, you know, you're, you thrive on rotten flesh, you know, delightful, right? Uh, so that's what ghouls are. And what is a warper? Uh, it's kind of, it's a pretty difficult class. So ghouls are a strong race, and warper is a weak background. Uh, what am I... I think that's what I'm looking for. Uh, so it's, I've 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 asked the game not to automatically quiver these tomahawks of dispersal for me because they're a very limited resource, and I'd rather not accidentally throw them. Uh, but so a warper is a difficult background. It starts with some translocations abilities. You know, the ability to move stuff from one place to another and some just general ability to fight in combat. Sort of okay, not that well. Um, so you, you get very early on, which we just in fact got, the spell Blink, which um, you know, instantly moves you 
to somewhere else you can see at random, uh, which is which is super valuable for getting out of bad spots. Uh, so that's sort of what Warper is about, I guess. You also get a few like um, you get a scroll of blinking, and you get some tomahawks of dispersal, uh, which. Um, if they hit an enemy and do damage, it blinks the enemy. But they're they disappear as soon as you use them, so you don't you don't get very many. A uh, helmet though, and ghouls. Uh, yes, put on the helmet. Uh, ghouls use their bare hands for combat typically, uh, at least in the early game, because they have claws and claws do uh, a lot more damage than fists. Even though they're not like very big claws, they're not like troll claws. Um, so and that's sort of a way to offset the fact that Warper starts out with not very good melee skills is to use your racial abilities, i.e. like a particularly good unarmed aptitude, or not even aptitude so much as, um, you know, ghouls have just claws, which is like, it's not like they have, they're good at unarmed skill, although they are, but just their, uh, their starting damage is, is better than most would be uh, at the beginning because they have claws. Um, and so we got a message a moment ago that says our flesh is rotting away. So rot is something that we, we didn't run into in any of our previous games. Uh, basically, if you look at the hit points bar, uh, it's got 24 out of 28 and then 29. And what this means is some of our maximum hit points have temporarily been removed. Uh, and for most characters, restoring rot uh, means like drinking healing potions. And those restore rot before they restore ordinary health. But for us, uh, we can just uh, eat some, some rotting flesh, which is just delicious and helps us uh, reconstitute ourselves, I guess. Uh... So I, I mean, I'll pick up Shroud of Galubia. I never quite know. Like, I've won a Warper, but I didn't do it very well. Uh, so I, I don't quite know how to play Warpers in the early game, necessarily. This is like our third adder on just in just the past minute or so. Uh, so it's a good thing we're undead, because this means adder number four. It means we're immune to poison, uh, which is the main threat that adders pre present. Yeah, they do some damage too, but mostly the problem is poison damage. Getting bitten by something that doesn't poison you, you know, it's not as big a deal. Uh, whoop. Yep, don't want to be in there, that's bad. Let's leave. So I tabbed that a little more than I should have, but it's going to be okay. I've got plenty of time to get away. The cockroach should catch me, but... It's uh, not a big deal. Oh, and these stairs come uh, back to exactly the... So it's a good thing I didn't come down those stairs originally, or I would have landed right in the middle of that fight. And there we go again. Like, I still don't... I don't know about I versus we. Uh, I don't change my mind about it uh, intentionally. I just sort of use whichever pronoun feels right, and I end up switching, like... Not mid-sentence, but, you know, I've sometimes pretty quickly. I don't really know why. I hope it doesn't bother you guys uh, to sometimes be we and sometimes be I. Uh, and I, I haven't even used any of the Warper starting spells yet. <laughs> um, you know, so we have, we have Blink, we have Apportation, we can pick up items that are far away. We have Sh Shroud of Galubria, which is a Fairly small buff, but early on in the game, even a small buff is pretty important. Uh, it basically uh, it randomly can, but doesn't necessarily uh, protect you from a melee attack. Any number of melee attacks, in fact. Uh, but the probability for the for that to happen is based on how big the attack it would be blocking is. And so the probabilities work out to it being, on average, the same as giving yourself 10 hit points. Uh, which is pretty good, uh, but we 
it's not very castable right now. Uh, you know, it's like it would fail 38% of the time, which is maybe acceptable if we could like cast it right before a combat and not need the hit points for anything, magic points for anything if it didn't work. Uh, but I'd like to have Blink available. Uh, speaking of, I think I'm going to actually learn some translocations here so that I can Blink. He has a Wand of Flame, uh, which, which really hurts a lot, and I wish he would stop using it. I'm going to actually try and hit him with some Tomahawks of Dispersal so I can take this staircase. No, nope. well, we got him away, but then he, uh, uh, then he hit me with the wand. I was going upstairs next turn, but too late. So when early game enemies have a wand, it's pretty rough. Oh, I feel bad about uh, all these early game deaths. Um, I haven't been playing the best characters, but you know, should I, should I have been dying in all these places? That Egypt one, I don't know. I should have just run away when I saw him and got into a different staircase, but I got greedy. I wanted the experience. Um, you know, that's, that's what's going to happen, I guess. Uh, but this has been a pretty short video, so we're going to give it another try. Um, I'm kind of inclined to play something stronger uh, so that I don't know, so that it's not all just videos of me splatting. Um, but I think those are fine too. Um, we could, uh, I don't want to just keep hammering on Ghoul Warper though. Let's ask for a random viable character. Troll? What? Why is that viable? That's awful. No. Tengu Fire Elementalist is fine, but I don't really want to. I'm just sort of looking for an inspiration here. Feel It Enchanter is one that I won somewhat recently. It's pretty hard, actually. Mummy Wizard. Mummies are all terrible. <laughs> uh, what am I going to play here? Tengu Summoner. Sure. Their Tengus are, make good summoners, and Tengu is an interesting race. Uh, so Tengu, I mentioned in a previous video, are sort of like, uh, they seem to me like bird people. I don't know if they actually are. They have uh, a beak and claws, and later they gain the ability to fly naturally. Um, and Tengu have um, what's, what am I thinking of? They have uh, good aptitudes for destructive magic like conjurations and for summoning. They, you know, they like ha to have allies, uh, but they're pretty bad at subtler forms of magic like hexes and charms and transmutations. They're sort of a brute force kind of thing. And they have great aptitudes for melee weapons too, or weapons in general. Uh, but they're, they have low hit points, low armor. Ap no, they actually have high armor aptitude. Look at that. But they just have generally low strength. They're they're more nimble, uh, nimble glass cannon sorts of characters. I mean, not really glass cannon, but in, in that sort of general direction. And so we're starting as a summoner, which means we can make allies, uh, and that's pretty strong early game because you can do damage without necessarily exposing yourself to a lot of risk. Um, when your summons do damage to enemies, you don't get as much experience for killing them, but that's generally not such a big deal. The amount you lose is not that big, and uh, it doesn't really matter that much. You get enough experience anyway. Wow. That hurt a lot. Please, you stupid bats. So, you know, the spell we have is Summon Small Mammal, and bats are just not very coordinated. <laughs> uh, you know, they sort of walk around at random. We have, we have very little hit points, so honestly I should be using my summons a little bit more aggressively and not getting in there myself. Uh, because just the littlest thing going wrong could, could kill me, really. 
Uh, and we are level two, so we learned a new summoning spell. We can call imps, uh, and there are various different kinds. You, so these are, you know, we talked about demons uh, being numbers, and five is the lowest tier demon, and, and so that's what, what call imps summons. It summons a five. Uh, and so like crimson imps are just completely useless. And they, they can hardly do anything, uh, really. But like white imps and shadow imps and iron imps are all pretty good. And I think you can get all of those out of call imp. But based on your spell power, you get like good imps or bad imps. And, you know, we got some crimson imps and this time they were actually helpful. But, you know, compared to what you can get out of a white imp, like crimson imps are just, <laughs> so we get distracted easily, I guess. And they, they blink around. Uh, when you would rather they stand still and fight a bad guy, they just sort of blink away. It's, it's not very, not very productive. Uh, whereas like white imps don't randomly blink for no reason. And there's a white imp, and they do quite a bit of damage with their. Although I killed it by myself, take that summons. They do quite a bit of damage with their ranged uh, cold attack. Uh, So you'd much rather get white imps, but you can't really control how many white imps you get. Uh, all you can really do is increase your spell power so that instead of crimson imps, you get, uh, for example, shadow imps or iron imps. I think those are the only kinds of imps. There's some other fives, like I think an Euphetipus is a, is a five, maybe. Maybe a Quasit. Is a five? I'm not sure. Uh, but for whatever reason, you don't get to control how many white imps you get. It's just at higher spell power, some of the you get like always you get like I don't know thirty percent of the time you get white imps. I, I don't know exactly, um, and it doesn't matter how much spell power you have. Adding more spell power. Come on, guys. Thank you. Uh, adding more spell power means that when you don't roll a white imp, you get something a little bit more useful than a crimson imp. Uh, so I don't know how long we're going to be focused on summoning stuff. Uh, like I said, uh, you're, in Crawl, you're, your starting background doesn't dictate what you have to do with your whole life. You can branch out. And and what you saw in a in our previous game or a previous game as a demon spawn enchanter, we sort of branched out into not enchanting very much, <laughs> but into just you know bopping things uh, with with a with a lajitang, a big two handed weapon. Uh, so, you know, I mean, Tangu are good at summoning, and uh, I have a good book with summoning spells in it, and I anticipate learning it for a while, but we might, you know, we're, we're probably going to, if nothing else, diversify into, like, being better at melee. Uh, I just realized, like, I haven't picked up a weapon at all, which is kind of dumb. I'm going to go back and uh, get this whip. Like that's better than being unarmed, at least. Ah, uh, yeah. There's no no new armor we want to wear. So, uh, but I do want to read these scrolls, and they are scrolls of identify. So let's just identify all these potions, huh? Fine. So we got. Cool. We got some useful potions. Good to know. Uh, I guess we killed this stuff. Uh, I didn't really see most of the combat happening, but these mammals and imps seem to have taken care of it, I guess. Ooh, an iron imp. That's a that's a good one. 
they just have like a lot of hit points and they do decent melee damage. You see, he's just like tanking this entire pack of enemies that was threatening to kill me, and he like didn't even get hurt. Uh, so I'm 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 quite fragile, and I need to remember that. But my summons should be quite strong. Uh, and I'm, I'm shouting at them, hey, you know, go kill that adder, please, or, or whatever. Uh, wow, ouch. There's an iron imp back here, and I just want to trade places with him so he can fight the adder. And I'm going to summon some mammals in case something goes wrong with the adder fight, but it didn't. Uh, I guess this worm fight could still go wrong. No, we got him. Good work, team. This time, we was me and my, my summons. Uh, so, I mean, summoning is... It's been a while since I played a summoner. I've, I've uh, watched some of Gamma Funk's... Uh, Twitch speedruns where he was playing a demon, not a demon, a deep elf summoner trying to get the, the high score. But, so you get the high score uh, mostly mostly based on uh, first number of runes you get. Well, So first of all, almost any win outscores almost any loss. Uh, if you do really well before dying, you can sometimes outscore somebody who uh, won the game but took a very long time. Uh, but mostly wins beat losses, and uh, the more runes you have to go with a win or loss, the better your score. And within the same number of runes, the number of turns it took you, you generally get a better score for going faster. So Gamma Funk is uh, trying for the 15 rune, which, recall, is the uh, highest number of runes you can get. Uh, high score uh, on Deep Elf Summoner, among other things. And, uh, you know, summons are just are just so powerful in the early game. It's something that I've learned to appreciate from watching his videos. Uh, here, our summons are sort of in a bad spot, but uh, we're not. As long as... Uh, as long as I stay close to the stairs, I can just run away when things go bad here. And uh, it looks like this kobold is kind of posing problems for some reason. Like this, my friendly Quokka is just not attacking. Like I have a ton of summons on the screen. They ought to just be tearing this stuff apart, right? Yeah. Okay, so it looks like we killed everything. Okay. Uh, so anyway, uh, I was just watching some of the Funk a while ago, and summons are strong. This is the lesson I learned from that. Uh, geez, you know, I leveled up twice and forgot to learn any new spells. That's what happens from playing some melee guys for a few games in a row. Uh, I have a great level three spell available that I should have uh, should have learned a while ago. Uh, so let's let's do that now. Let's learn Canine Familiar. And uh, we sort of like tend to pick a level four spell. I, I don't really get Guardian Golem. It it basically is another summon that uh, when your other summons are damaged the Guardian Golem takes some of the damage for them. Which is cool, like it makes you guys more uh, durable. But I don't really understand how to use it well, so I've never really learned it. Uh, but I, you know, Ice Beast and Lightning Spire, you sort of choose to branch out into ice or into air, basically. Uh, and Tengu are a lot better at air, so we're probably going for Lightning Spire. You know, because we're, we're like birds, right? 
Uh, a quarterstaff is a good starting weapon for a, a spellcasting race uh, background. Uh, it's two-handed, which means you know you can't use a shield, but we we don't really want to use shields anyway because uh, that would impede spell casting, and it's just generally pretty strong uh, for being used at zero skill, uh, and I I don't want. To invest a lot of points in it, so how good it is at zero skill is sort of like the most important measurement of how good it is. Uh, you know, I want to put points into a weapon skill eventually. Tango are good at that, and I like to do it on just about every character anyway, even the most fragile ones. Uh, okay, so here's our first uh, altar to Gozag. Gozag is the god of gold and greed. Um, he lets you spend money instead of piety, and when enemies die, instead of leaving corpses, they just turn into gold, and you get more gold. Lots and lots of gold. Uh, and Gozag is generally regarded as not a very strong god. Um, I agree with this. I don't think he's as bad as people say. Uh, since early game, you get uh, you get access to Potion Petition, which is a, a pretty strong buff that you you can't use like a lot in the super early game, but you can use for like the tougher fights. Not as much as say Okawaru's Heroism, but you can use a fair bit of it. Uh... So I have taken Dungeon 2 Okawaru before, or Dungeon 2 Gozag, and been a lot happier than if I hadn't. You know, he saved my life a couple of times, and I eventually won that game. Um, you know, I would rather have, say, Sif or something, or Okawaru, or maybe not Kyriados. Ashen Zari is great. Uh, Rue would be good again. Uh, you know, but, uh, Gozak's fine. I'll take it. Uh, and so when you join, Gozak charges you a service fee. So unlike most gods, you get all your abilities are available immediately as soon as you join Gozag, and they stay available forever. Uh, but they cost a lot of money, like 800 gold. You can, you can have a, a merchant set up shop in a dungeon, and, like, we only have 91 right now. And then you have to like pay for the stuff in his shop, right? I mean, it's geez, what a what a hassle. Uh, but you get just so much more gold as a goes egg worshiper uh, that it's not that, that pretty quickly you gain access to this stuff. Uh, and the main thing is that you. You get to use Potion Petition, which randomly selects you know several mixes of multiple potion effects. Like maybe you get Curing and Heal Wounds and Flight and Haste or something. Uh, and the more powerful potions are in it, the more money Goes Egg charges you. Uh, and you get to pick from among several sets. Uh, but the first Potion Petition is free, uh, which is one of the the best things about Gozag, in my opinion. Come on, I'm, I'm right here, you stupid snake. Um, is like, you get an ability immediately upon joining him, and most gods don't give you that. You only get to use it once, but like, that's all you need to get out of one nasty combat. And early game, there's you know bound to be some situation that you just you know couldn't do a lot about, and you really want out. Uh, and so that's what that's what you can use Goes Egg's first potion petition for. Uh, the problem is that uh, you know we can't uh, all all the corpses in this game are turning into gold, and so we can't eat them. 
And there's plenty of permafood in the game, even for a spellcaster, generally. Uh, we haven't found a lot yet. And... You know, casting these spells is costing us some hunger. So I'm really just sort of hoping to find some food soon. Uh, okay. I'm wondering if I'm going to regret this Gozag conversion. I should maybe have checked how much food I had before I agreed. Mostly I just tell people, you know, don't worry about it. You don't actually run out of food. It's something you just worry about more than it actually happens. Uh, but I'm casting these spells that are a little bit high level. Gosh, this is a long walk. And, uh, I mean, not very high level, but I just not, I don't have a lot of training in spell casting, which reduces the amount of hunger stuff costs. Whoops, took a corner wrong there, wasted a turn. Uh, and so I'm like, uh, getting kind of hungry and could really use some food, please. Uh, or I'm going to have to abandon Gozag in shame, you know. There's no food anywhere. So notice, like, every every monster we kill, like I said, is, is turning into gold. Uh, and another Gozag effect is that this gold distracts enemies. They're like, wow, gold. And so you can, they act kind of like, they're distracted uh, or confused. Uh, so, you know, that, that's a nice bonus in addition to getting more gold. So, this is an orc and an adder is a pretty serious threat, honestly. But with our canine familiar by our side. Oh, I forgot. Gozag also lets you detect all gold on a floor. <laughs> you know, mostly it doesn't matter. You're, you're planning to explore the whole floor anyway. It's just a flavor thing. Um, but sometimes it can help, you know. If you're trying to get an idea for roughly how the floor is shaped, knowing where there's some gold can help. Come on, you stupid hound. I need to kill... Well, never mind, I got it under control, I guess. All right, found some pizza. So that's that's enough that you know, we'll get by. Uh, and this guy has a dagger of electrocution, which on the one hand is a very dangerous weapon. On the other, uh, it's, a, it's a dangerous weapon, and now I got it. Ah, uh, you know, like, eh. Uh, dagger of electrocution is great. Uh, electrocution does a flat amount of damage that doesn't care how much damage you did with your weapon. And so something like a dagger that attacks often for a low amount of damage is what you want the electrocution brand on. You can wear gloves, right? Yeah. Uh, mysteriously, I actually got to sneak up on this guy and stab him. I don't know why. I'm not that stealthy. Um, okay, so it seems to me like our summons are... Well, let's get up to level 7, I guess. I think there are some integer breakpoints here that matter a little. Uh, but our, our summoning ability is getting high enough that we have the ability to kill enemies, basically, uh, comfortably. Uh, so the next thing to work on is not dying. So I'm probably going to, as soon as summoning hits 7, I'm going to turn that off. And wow, an Ice Beast, huh? Okay. Uh, this is a, a friendly, or at any rate, neutral Quokka at, at the Elivalon altar. Uh, Elivalon is sort of the god of peace and not being a jerk to everybody all the time. Ooh, that's that's very good. Um, so, potion of beneficial mutation. So I was talking earlier about how I don't like to drink potions of mutation. 
because uh, they can give you good mutations, they can give you bad ones. Potion of Beneficial Mutation is quite rare. Uh, it gives you a good mutation. And, you know, sometimes good is a little bit nebulous, like you get something that's good, but not actually what you wanted. But it's not going to be something straight up negative, like minus two int or whatever. So I'm just going to drink it now. And, uh, I think that's good. It's sort of a, a, a toss-up. Uh, our magic spells got a little harder to cast, but more powerful. And... Generally, that's good, um, because you can always put a few more points into summonings or whatever and get your fail rates back down to where you wanted them to be, uh, and they gain more power, like, in addition to all of the, you know, while you're training down the fail rate, you're also training up the power, so uh, this will make our summons more powerful and they'll last longer. Uh, it means I might want to train summonings a little bit longer than seven. Uh, but honestly, I think these fail rates are fine. So this is a mummy, a unique mummy. And he's like the only threat in the early game that has access to the spell Torment. Uh, you don't see Torment until way later in the game, except on Minkare. Uh, and he's slow uh, and vulnerable to fire, and you know there's a lot of things you can do to him. But Torment just like instantly takes away half of your hit points. Whatever you have currently, you lose half of it. And he also has Pain that does, you know, damage. So damage based on, uh, not based on how much you have left. So you can get Tormented a few times and then, he, you know, and then he'll cast Pain or something uh, to finish you off. And... Um, Uh, I don't like this. So he's particularly bad to fight as a summoner because his um, torment hits everything he can see all at once. Uh, I could call some imps who are, I presume, immune to torment. Uh, and then I could stand behind them, I guess. Yeah, it seems like an alright plan. I was thinking of just running away because I'm faster than he is. Ha, <laughs> Ujat. I don't know exactly. So we got two Shadow Imps. Yeah, they're immune to negative energy. Which I think includes Torment. Everybody kill Menkare, please. Doesn't seem to... Well, they can't actually do any damage to him, can they? Uh, because all Shadow Imps can really do is cast Pain, which doesn't work on mummies. And he's resistant to cold. So, ugh. You know, they're, they're sort of just having to use their melee, which is not that good. Yeah, I think I need to just run away from this. The Crimson Imps can attack him, but they don't really do fire damage. I guess they're, they're sort of making progress. He's heavily damaged. I maybe shouldn't have used the last of my magic there on another imp. Uh, rather save up for a canine familiar, which I think ought to be able to finish him off. Like the torment is gonna hurt it. You know, I might I might just die here, what an idiot. Let's read Ambrosia. Or quaff ambrosia here, so that that confuses you, but greatly increases your magic and hit point resistance briefly. So we're we're confused, but you know we got up to like full hit points basically. Okay, so a canine familiar now, and then some imps, and then attack him. All right, we got him.
Yeah, I, I should have thought about it. The imps are safe against him, but... Uh, but he's also pretty safe against imps, and just summoning a hound first would have probably been better. Uh, but, you know, we got out of it. Uh, this is a stupid ghost. And a phantom. Dangerous stuff on this floor. And there's that ice beast. Man, a lot of stuff around here that I don't want to mess with. Uh, so, I mean, we're, we're certainly not going to make it to the lair in the first video here or because uh, so much of the video was taken up with other characters that I killed at, like, level 1 or, you know, level 3 or whatever. Uh, but I think it may be getting to be about time to, uh, to wrap up this video. We have a character who's doing all right. Uh, so maybe I'll just wrap up Dungeon 4, or die, hopefully not. Um, I'm starting to get like some allergies or something, which is not the best thing to catch on camera. Nobody wants to listen to that. Uh, and this Phantom is proving problematic. Would everybody please kill him? Like, are we even hurting him? Yeah. I just have to not get into battle myself, I guess. Uh, and we're running low on food again. Uh, but we have more food than we did last time, so I mean, it's fine. Uh, I'll just eat some bread. And uh, summon up a new hound. We actually got a wolf, so our spell power is going uh, going up quite quickly. Uh, and I chose not to stop it at 7 because of the wild magic thing. So a wolf honestly ought to be t able to take care of this phantom. If I were to fight a wolf, it says it's extremely dangerous. Uh, like it would be a threat that would be in red if I were to fight it. Where did the phantom go? Hello, here he is. And I killed him myself. Great. Uh, yeah, there's just too much nasty stuff left here with this ice beast and this player ghost. Uh, actually, I mean he's just a transmuter. I think I, since I happen to have a wolf like lying around. Uh, we are going to take a crack at this. Oh, I woke up the Ice Beast by shouting, though. That, not the best thing I could have done, I suppose. Um, yeah, but this wolf, like, it's so... Okay, well, he's dead. But he did a lot of damage. <laughs> Everybody kill some stuff, please. Uh... Huh? What did we kill? We killed the ghost. And we killed the ice beast. Alright. So, that was nice. Uh, the spell power is really ramping up. Uh, both because of our you know, good aptitudes and that mutation we got. Uh, and so that was Dungeon 4. And that's been a fairly long video. Um, you know, we... Several characters went by here and I, I splatted some of them. I splatted all of them except this one, of course. Uh, some of them I feel like I just just did not play well at all. Uh, at least one of them I felt there's not a lot I could have done. It was just a bad character, and it got luck unlucky at the beginning. Uh, this one I hope to carry on. So I think I'll, I'll make this, uh, you know, start naming the series after this guy. He's made it to Dungeon 4. You know, he deserves He's a Tengu Summoner of Gozag. So that's, that's who we're going to be for this, this little series. 
So uh, I'll see you in the next one, and thanks for watching.